of total restoration. The scripture says, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Can we be glad in it? Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. 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 This is the day the oh, Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I want to take the time to welcome all of you here in the sanctuary. I'd like to welcome all of you who are a part of Facebook Live or YouTube. But we have come to have church this morning. Amen. 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 So glad that you have decided to join us. We believe that there is a word The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. And they that dwell therein, he hath founded it upon a sea and established it upon the floods. Who shall ascend? into the hill of the Lord or who shall stand in this holy place he that have clean hands and a pure heart who have not lifted up his soul into vanity nor sworn deceitfully he shall receive from the Lord righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is the generation of him that seek him, that seek thy face. O Jacob, Selah, lift up your heads, all ye gates, and hey, be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory, I wish somebody would yell it out with me. King of glory. King of glory. King of glory. King of glory. Come in. Who is the king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty. In battle. Lift up your hands, all ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory, the King of glory, shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord of hosts. The King of glory. Come on and clap your hands and bless the Lord. Ah. Confident in this, I will see the goodness of the Lord. Say it with me. I will see the goodness of the Lord. While your hands are lifted, come on and go with me in prayer today. Come on, begin to worship him. Just for a minute, begin to worship him. Charge this atmosphere with worship. Bless his name. Thank you. Father, we give you glory and we give you honor today. We thank you for the goodness and the mercy that follows us. Thank you because you are our shepherd. Thank you because you're God alone. You don't need any help being you. And we thank you for that. If there's anything standing in front of us that's not like you, 
anything residing in our hearts that's not like you, we ask now for forgiveness that this word may go forth and lay dormant in our spirits to remind us that we are new creatures and old things have passed away. All things have become new. We thank you, God, because you are a loving God. You are a wonderful God. You are a compassionate God. You are our master. You are our keeper. You are our peace. And we thank you today. And we take this moment and shift this atmosphere into a war zone for the enemy. To let him know you will not have our children. You will not have our spirits, our families. And you will not have our spirit. And we bless the Lord in here today. And we call those things that be not as though they were in Jesus name we pray amen and amen you may be seated in the presence of the Lord today thank you everyone for joining us so good to be alive and so good to be here amongst the land of the living thank you so much for another opportunity to enter into the house of the Lord anybody glad to be here come on Make that your declaration and say with me, I'm so glad to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. And, and I, I get the principle that if I'm not here, amen, that God is still God and he is still good. But there's something about being again in his presence. And so today I want to to just embrace the presence of the Lord because he is so good to us. Amen. Can I get a witness out there today? Amen. He is so good to us and, and we owe him our life. And because we owe him our life, uh, we don't wait until we get in church to praise him. Can I get a witness, somebody? You know, y'all know what they normally say, that when I think of the goodness and all he's done for me, my soul cries out. Hallelujah. So I don't have to get in church to praise him. Amen. I don't have to check my bank account to praise him. If when I wake up, when my feet hit the ground, I ain't nobody mad but the devil. Amen, because God has kept me and he has, amen, protected me and his grace and his mercy overshadows all of us. And for this, we give him praise. So I want to go into my message today until the message actually what God has shared with me entitled the potholes of life. The potholes of life. Um, the, the potholes of life. Um, if we're going to talk about the potholes or a pothole, uh, you got to know what a pothole is and, and what it comes from. And so I was listening to God and God was sharing some things with me and I, I do not preach what I have not practiced. Amen. If I have experienced it and I have came out of it or if I'm actually in it, I believe that that's the most effective teaching. So, so, so I had an experience, amen, with tires. Every time I brought a, or bought or purchased a tire, it seems as if the tire would somehow either catch a nail or the riding for a while and the thread would go bad. And simply because I needed a front end alignment. And, and when you fail to get a front end alignment on your car, I'm using this metaphorically, so if you follow me, um, then you can drive your car, but you don't even know that you're bearing to the left or to the right. 
Um, and, and this is how many believers are, uh, uh, Brother Sam, that many of us don't even realize we need a front-end alignment, meaning that, that when we are riding and when we are driving or going, around, going on in life, we have to remember that it's very easy to look normal when you are straying away slowly. It looks very common. It looks very normal. But it's not. And some of us, um, our alignment is so bad that we can't even take our hands off the wheel. Because when you take it off, you instantaneously start swerving to the left or to the right. And so, and so Sam, I had to wonder, well, why, what's wrong with me? What's wrong with my car? And what I realized is that I kept hitting potholes. Oh, my. I kept hitting potholes uh, the other night because, and I actually thought I was doing right. And I realized that even if I go different routes, it doesn't mean the potholes are not there. And, and so I had to really get into a place in God that I could hear what he was saying to me, Felicia. And, and God instructs me to talk to you today and those of you that are watching us about the potholes in your life. Number one, I want you to grab this, that all of us have them. Okay? So don't never get so deep that you forget that you are exempt from a pothole. All of us have potholes, spiritual potholes. So just in case you said, well, I'm, I don't drive, so I don't have to worry about one. Well, you still have a pothole uh, in your life. And, and I, was, I was praying, and God was revealing some things to me, and he was talking to me. And, and I, I wondered, well, how in the world does potholes become so plenteous? And so I was reading, and I was studying, and, and I found out that potholes are formed although they are asphalt, but they are formed by water. So when water gets under the cement or the asphalt, it breaks it up, making a hole. And another, another way that it is, it is created is by, is by freezing. When you have freezing temperatures, uh, like when it's very, very cold, and the temperature is freezing, uh, it creates uh, a culture for the asphalt to break up. Another way that potholes are created are by excessive heat. When it is extremely hot, the, the hot weather. And, and I thought to myself, uh, Mother Parker, well, don't they use heat to lay asphalt? But then it is the same thing that they use can be the same thing that creates the potholes. Then, of course, we know potholes are created by just simply wear and tear. And, of course, as we all can, can attest to this, time. Time is always the thing that will wear you out. And, and while airplanes and cruises are at a low what happens, Sister Gail, is that now that because nobody is flying that much during the pandemic and nobody's taking too many cruises, some of y'all mad because you had to get your money back for your cruise. But because this has occurred, people have to travel by car. And when they travel now by car, that puts more wear and tear on the streets. And when it puts more wear and tear on the streets, it becomes a possibility that there are more potholes. And so, so I was, I was praying. I was praying about it. And, and there are some couple of facts that I want you to understand about, about a pothole. So, so in, the, in, the, in, the, in the wintertime is when, is when the seasons are created. Where the season of winter creates an atmosphere for a pothole. So when it's very, very cold outside. Right? It was very, very cold outside. The coldness of the weather affects the asphalt. But watch this. 
but you don't see the pothole until the spring. All right? So, so let, me, let me say it again. So, so the pothole is, is actually created from the atmosphere in the wintertime. But you don't actually see the pothole until the spring. And, 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 so, and so God said to me, one of the issues with me is that you're too anxious. Because when in, in one season, you are looking for results to occur. And God said, that's not how I operate. I, I create and allow things to be done in one season. And then in the next seasons is the manifestation. So the question now to many of you under my voice, here it is, what season are you in? Okay, and, and, and say this with me, I need to stop rushing God. So that means that, that although there is a promise for your life, and although God has made a decree over your life, if he makes it in one season, number one, it doesn't mean it's not going to happen. You got to wait until it's the season and the time that what God had decreed over your life, that then it would be manifested. If you notice about Sarah and Abram, he told them, Mother Parker, you're going to have a baby. And they were older, and they were beyond childbearing years. But God still said, you're going to have a child. All right? Here comes a pothole. Well, he must not be talking about us. So you know what Abram does, and you know what he does? He tells his wife, and Sarai says, well, now he can't be talking about us. So uh, go ahead on and have my handmaid, which is Hagar. And there goes a pothole. Because God said, you are going to have a child. You and Sarai, you and Sarah, y'all are going to have a child. The seed of promise is going to come through you. So because they had a pothole, they took it upon themselves, and did what they thought was right, and it created a pothole. All right? And many of us in here, if we are not careful, we create our own potholes because we don't trust God. And we take things in our own hand, and we try to fix things the way we think it should be done. And we become very, we're not receptive to what people are trying to say to us. And because we are not receptive to it, we bring danger and hurt among ourselves. All right? Now, now let, me, let me move on because I want to share something with you in the Bible. Uh, um, so what happens, Pastor, when potholes are ignored? All right? Some of you, like most of you, are going to say, well, the seeds of Greensboro need to fix that. You know? There's a big pothole that has been over here for years right here on Yanceyville Street going into the gas station. It seems like that pothole has been there forever. But what happens when it is ignored? Well, this pothole has been there for so long, uh, Ms. Latika, that it has expanded. It has gotten bigger. And what happens to many of us is you've been ignoring the parts of your life that God is trying to give you the, the, uh, the anointing, or he is giving you the anointing and the wisdom to fix, but you keep ignoring it. And what happens is it gets bigger and bigger and bigger, and you try to go around it, and you try to skip over it. You try to talk about everybody else's problems, but that's not going to work. It's not going to cause your potholes to go away. All right? And all of us have them. They, they become bigger. They become deeper. And they, more importantly, they are impossible to avoid. Keep living, all right? And they will not go away until they are fixed. All right? And then, and then we can go around them. We can go another route. But guess what? The pothole will still be there. All right? What are the potholes in our lives? One of the issues in ministry and in life is we judge people by the size of the pothole that they're facing. Just because my pothole is bigger than yours doesn't mean I've done something worse than you. All right? Just because my pothole may be longer and wider than yours does not give you the audacity to preach about me and tweet about me 
and Facebook messages about me. Because at the end of the day, the very one that you are posting about, the very pothole that you are coming against is making its way to your life. Um, and, 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 and the potholes in our life, what, what are they? Pastor, what are they? They, 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 they? They're simply this. They are things that we won't fix. Some of us have been living lives with situations that are not fixed. And you blame people. You blame your husband. You blame your wife. You blame your children. You blame your family. But you need to fix it. And what happens, Elder Brenda, is we become so accustomed to living like this that we make it a part of, we make it a part of our everyday life. There are some things in our life, if you can be honest with me, say it with me, there are some things in my life that I need to fix. And I'm not talking about my hair. I'm not talking about, well, you know, I need to get my eyebrows arching. I'm not talking about stuff like that because you're going to be pretty with or without hair. Okay, that went over some of y'all here. <laughs> even if your eyebrows are not arched, you know, you, even if you look like Bert, you are still beautiful. <laughs> Bert, Bert, yeah. All of us are, you're fearfully and wonderfully made. God had you created for such a time as this. And so, so the things, the potholes in our lives, if they don't get fixed, they become bigger and they become that which will torment you. And it's not fun being saved and being defeated. Ooh, that's a good one. It's not, it's, it's not cool shouting, but you ain't fixed the problem. We'll go deeper. Okay, let me go deeper. See, some of you believe that shouting fixes your problem. I'm going to go on this side, switch to this side of the podium. Shouting does not fix your problem. You can shout all day and still need your bills paid. You shout all day and still need your insulin. You shout all day and still need to get things done in your body. You, you have to, you have to, that's something that you have to do. Additionally, Besides just, I'm claiming it. I'm claiming it. You're tired. I'm claiming it. I'm claiming and tired. No, there's something else you have to do. You hungry? You got money? Go, go, go buy yourself something to eat. Well, how you look with a pocket full of money and you put $5 in the gas tank? That means you got, you're not going to go but so far. And then what happens to you, like many of us, we end up again at the gas station, but not utilizing the wisdom that God has given us, and it becomes a pothole. It's sad that saints don't like saints. I'll let that one sink in for just a minute. Sad. Sad that you don't like a person for what they said to you or what you heard they said. You didn't hear it. You heard about it, and now you don't like them. Some of the potholes in our lives are results made, watch this, from a moment of insecurity. Let me ask you this question. Any of you ever had a weak moment? I see, I see like five hands go up. If you've had a weak moment, say, Pastor, that's me. I've had a weak moment. Huh? I'm talking about even after you were saved. Huh? All right. So, so let me ask you this. Even at weak moment, how many of you can be honest and say, I made a choice in that moment I shouldn't have made? And, 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 and some of us, ooh, I, you might not like this. You weren't even having a weak moment. You just had a bad choice. So you got to be careful what choices you make in moments of insecurity. And, and, and when, you, when you are not careful about that, you create potholes. Okay? All right. Here's another one. Um, one of the potholes in our lives is that which inflicts hurt upon ourselves. You know, 
stop blaming people for hurt because a lot of people have intended to hurt you, but it's because you gave them permission to do it. Okay, let me say that slower, okay? Stop giving people permission to hurt you. Okay, get to a place in your life, yes, you know, well, you know, I knew they were going to do that, you know. I knew that. That's why we always talk about this one word around sanctuary now, discernment. You got to stop giving people permission to backstab you. Stop giving people permission to cut off your spiritual limbs. Stop giving people permission to make you feel like you're nobody. Because you are somebody in God's eyesight. And the way society is, the way things are going on, I'm not political, I don't do any of that, but the way society is, they, they, the first thing they want you to believe is that you are nobody because you are of a different color. But you are somebody. All right? And you are blessed and highly favored. And if God brought you through one storm and brought you through this storm and brought you through that storm and brought you through this trial and brought you through that trial, and brought you through all these tribulations. What makes you think that you're not important in God's eyesight? You may not be celebrated in another person's view, but in God's view, you're the apple of his eye. So some of us create potholes for ourselves because our thinking is so corrupt. Now, let me get into the word, all right? I want it's, it's, it's something I want you to really pay attention to in the Bible. Uh, we talk about this king a lot. His name is Saul. And everybody knows what happened to Saul. Saul messed up, right? He did. Saul messed up. But, but before he messed up, you know, for the longest deacon, I was thinking that Saul messed up, watch me, when he did not kill Agag. All right? So I thought that that was his downfall. But after reading and studying Mother Parker, I want y'all to never forget this. That was not his downfall. His downfall, all right, was this. Samuel told Saul, I'm coming to Gilgal. All right, this is in the 13th chapter. I'm coming to Gilgal. Now, he did not come. As a matter of fact, tell you what, you don't believe me. So let's read it. First Samuel 13, okay? First Samuel 13, listen to this. Samuel told Saul, I'm coming to Gilgal. All right? Watch this verse number 8. He tarried seven days. Who did? Samuel. According to the set time that he had appointed. But Samuel came not to Gilgal. All right? And the people scattered from him. From who? From Saul. Okay? Okay? Remember this now. This is, I don't want you to ever, ever forget this. Because for the longest, I thought that his downfall was when he did not kill Agag. But I'm going to show you the pothole that messed him up in his life. I'm going to show you the beginning of his downfall. Perhaps this is where many of us are at today. Saul said, Bring hither a burnt offering to me and peace offerings. And he, who did? Saul offered the burnt offering. This is the problem because he, though he was the king, he was not the priest. And he was not the one to what? Offer burnt offerings. Every time you get out of line with God, you are creating a pothole. I want you to hear me today. Hear me today. Well, how do I get out of line with God? When you are trying to do what God didn't anoint you to do. And I know many people are not going to agree with me today. And many pastors that will watch this and many people that will hear this will say, well, I can't really agree with this. But any time that God has given you a role of specificity and you, and you attempt to operate outside of that role, that becomes the beginning of your downfall. 
Okay, pastor would prove it. All right. Saul said, bring hither a burnt offering to me, and peace offerings. And he offered the burnt offering. And it came to pass. That simply means there is a time frame. And it came to pass that as soon as he made an end of offering the burnt offering, behold, watch what happens. Here comes Samuel. So, so because Samuel is not there at the appointed time, Saul takes it upon himself to do Samuel's job. All right? And Samuel came, Saul went out to meet him that he might salute him. And Samuel said, what has thou done? Ooh, Samuel is very disappointed. Samuel is very disgusted because he knew that Saul was anxious trying to do what God did not anoint him to do. And Saul said, because I saw that the people were scattered from me and that thou camest not within the days appointed. And that the Philistines gathered themselves together at Machmash. Therefore said I, the Philistines have come down now upon me to Gilgal, and I have not made supplication unto the Lord. I forced myself and offered a burnt offering. And this becomes the beginning of Saul's down. What you have started to read after this is his kingdom beginning to sink because he hit a pothole and he didn't have to do what he did. Well, back that up, preacher. What you mean? All right. All of you come to points in your life where you have to make a choice. What do I do? The man of God is not here. What do I do? My husband is not here. What do I do? My boss is not here. What do I do? The teacher is not here. My brother is not here. My sister is not here. It still does not indicate that you operate outside of the place that God has anointed you. And this was Saul's problem because Samuel was not there yet, he took it upon himself to offer a burnt offering. Wait a minute, preacher, hold up. Wait a minute. Is there something wrong to offering a burnt offering? No, there's nothing wrong with it. But if that's not what God told you to do, then there is something wrong. And many of us live our lives Thinking, well, it's okay. It's going to be all right. Ain't nothing wrong with doing this. Ain't nothing wrong with doing that. There is something wrong with doing it if God didn't tell you to do it. And this marks the beginning of Saul's downfall. Why? He created a pothole for himself that all he had to do was wait upon Samuel. forced himself to do what God didn't instruct him to do. Here comes the problem. Why are you trying to force things? Why are you trying to force yourself upon someone? Why are you trying to force your ministry? Why are you trying to force your ideas? Why are you trying to force your thoughts into the minds of others? If that's not what God commissioned you to do, you create a pothole. Uh, let me move on. There's another one in the book of Mark. There's a young lady, all right, who was, um, she was not a, a, a Greek. She was not a, she was not a Jew, put it this way, all right. And let me, let me just read this to you, all right? This woman, she was a Syrophoenician woman, uh, which means she was a Gentile, okay? And, and, and here's what happened to her. So, Jesus makes an entrance unto the borders of Tyre and Sidon, right? And, and he entered into a house, 
and, and no one, he really didn't want to be discovered, but because of his fame and because of who he was, Jesus could never be hid. And that's kind of like the way things are now. When Jesus is really in your life, tell somebody, I can't hide it. Because he's done so much for me, I just have to tell somebody of the goodness of the Lord. I wish I had two witnesses in here. How I many of you can be honest that, that I, I can't hide the thing that God has done in my life? I, I, I mean, I, I don't know about you. I don't know about your story. I don't, I don't know what all you've been through, but what, what he's done for me, I, I, I just can't hide it. And, 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 and I believe that we are living in a day when we should stop hiding what God has done for us. As a matter of fact, when you go to the, to the stores and when you find yourself out in public, it should be noticeable on your life that you are not who you used to be. Mm. You are not who you once was. And but why? Because God has done something magnificent, something wonderful on the inside of your life. Which somebody would say something. I want you to look at somebody and tell them I just can't hide it. Uh, maybe you don't know what it's like being on a hospital bed and them having to come and push you over and to, and to feed you and to do things for you that you normally could do for yourself. But somehow, in some way, God brought you out of I just can't hide it. I just got to tell somebody that God is just good to me. I want you to find you a churchy neighbor and tell them, I just can't hide it. Come on and say, you know, you know what? Tell them again, I just can't hide it. You know, there, there are some things that, that, that God brought me through that I would never share with the saints. There, there are some stuff that, that God delivered me from that I, I just couldn't tell anybody. But I found out through the word of God that though he slay me, I'm still... Okay, let me go somewhere else. Uh, he couldn't be hid. And this woman, this woman, Mother Parker, had a daughter. And this is what the Bible says about her, Elder Donna. She had a spirit in her. Okay? So, so she has a spirit in her. Now get this. The daughter with the spirit... It's not the pothole. Oh, my goodness. All right, so let me get you. So, so those of you parents listening to me and you saying, well, you know my child, they won't do this and they won't do that. I'm about to knock their teeth out. Well, that ain't the pothole. Oh, my goodness. Well, let, let me move on. So she has, a, she has a spirit in her. And get this, Sister Gail. The Bible is specific about what kind of spirit she has. An unclean spirit. And, and, and so, so she heard that Jesus was in the hood. Right? And so she came and fell at his feet. And so, so the woman, she was a Greek, and, and, and so she said, you know, uh, you know my daughter got a, got, a, got a devil in her. And, and, and I'm, I'm coming to you. And, and, and so Jesus said something that's very, very important. All right? And here's what he says. He says, listen, um, he was not being sarcastic. He was not being funny. But he was, he was I'm going to the pothole. Uh, watch this. He says, uh, let the children first be filled. All right? For it is not meat to take the children's bread and to cast it to the dogs. Now many of us, oh, my God, did Jesus call her a dog? No, that's not what he's saying. That's not what he's saying. He's, he's, he's making a point because he know and he knew that there was something in her that needed to be revealed by the children. Oh, okay. Well, who, who are the children? The children are the Jews. The children are the disciples. The children are those who are following him, who want from him, but don't want a relationship 
with him. The children are those who are coming to church every Sunday but won't change. The children are those who are shouting all the time but won't forgive. So God sets this up. Hear me? And he says, it's not meat to take the bread of the children and give it to the dogs. Listen to what she says. Yes, you are right. Oh, Lord. Okay. Wait a minute. Pastor, are you sure it's what she says? Yes. The dogs. You, you, I, I hear you. I, I believe if I can put it in today's term. I hear you, bro. Mm. And, 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 and everything you saying, because you're the man. And, and you're right. But, but, but the dogs eat. What's under the table? Oh, oh Lord, how mercy. Which means there's nothing but crumbs. So, so even if I can just get just a little bit of what's, what's the whole, I believe there's still enough power in the crumb. Oh, my goodness. That's in the whole cake. Well, what are you saying? See, this is really not the problem. The problem was... She wanted was not entitled to her. Right? What you mean? Why you say that, preacher? Because she was a Greek. She was a Greek. She was not a Jew. All right? And because she was not of the children. All right? There was a saying that, you know, well, they ain't supposed to get this. And Jesus had to break that burial. And so he allowed her to break it by what came out of her mouth. He needed those around him to hear that if she, who ain't even a child of God, has faith to receive what y'all won't get, we're going to give it to her. And I want you to hear this, that I refuse, Felicia, to come to church Sunday after Sunday and Wednesday after Wednesday and allow some of y'all that don't want nothing from God to let it pass me by. But the devil is a liar. When I step into the house of the Lord, everything God has for me, it is for me. I might not look like you. I might not dance like you. But I'm still entitled to healing in my body. I'm still entitled to deliverance in my family. Open up your mouth and say, yeah. Pothole. Mother Parker was this. She didn't fit the description. And let's be honest. This is the problem with a lot of us. We don't fit the description of a lot of people. So they, they don't want you around, James. Oh. Who bold enough to say, but that's all right. That's all right. They, you, you don't fit the description, Pastor Queenie, because you won't do what they think you should do. Oh, you know, I know you want a husband, so you have to dress like this, and you have to reveal like this, and you have to put a little bit more in your walk. The devil is a lie. Yeah. Just because, okay, hear me, because you won't do what folks want you to do has nothing to do with what God has for you. That's why when you come to church, this is why we shout, because God gives us what people said we won't never have. She didn't fit. I feel like preaching, Sam. I really, really do. She, she didn't fit the description. You know what? And this is the problem. I, 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 I'm making a declaration. I might not be the most famous preacher. I might not have all of these limousines and all of these houses and cars, but I believe that if God keeps anointing me for such a time as this, I can make a difference with the little bit that I have. And I'm not going to bow. I'm not going to compromise just to fit into your description of me. 
The devil is a lie. God made me like I am and I'm going to bless his name. I want you to look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, did you hear the preacher? Everything that's not like God has to pass over from you because God has made you like you are. You are fearfully and wonderfully made and there is not another person like you. And because of that, you ought to lift your hands to the Lord and say, God, I just want to praise you. God, I just want to thank you. God, I just want to lift you up. God, I want to open my mouth and shout glory to your name. God, hallelujah. All right, y'all. Okay, y'all see it back there. Y'all don't do that, y'all. Y'all see it back there. The pothole was that she didn't fit the description. And if she would have left it up to them disciples, she wouldn't have got nothing. And let me let me go deeper right here. So if it's left up to you. Would you suspend what somebody deserves? Uh, you, do you have that much iniquity and injustice in your heart that you can't look past the iniquity that's hiding in you and decree? I know that they sometime I ain't hearing nobody. I know that they shady, and I know there ain't nothing. But a, whole, but a piece of work. But I'm going to still pray for them. Okay. All right. Let me, let, me, let me bring it to reality. We watched last week the most historical debate ever. I ain't talking about nobody. I'm just saying. We, we watch the most historical debate ever. And so, so what I did, Brother Kelly, you know, afterwards, I get on Facebook and, 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 and Instagram, and everybody is dogging out the president. They were saying stuff like, yeah, mm-hmm, bet you wear that mask now. And somebody even had the audacity by Mother Parker to say, yes, God, get them. And I said to myself, I thank God I'm safe. Because even though I'm not a fan of him, I'm not a fan of death for him. Are, are y'all getting this? That's how I know I'm saved. Because, because even people who I'm not really a fan of, I don't want nothing wrong to happen to them. See, and you know, and this is how you got to check yourself or you create potholes in your life. That people that you know don't like you, do you really want something to be done to them because they don't like you? See, you got to remember, the spirit of Hammond is real. Oh, no. And, and, and see, what you think is that, well, you know, the spirit of heaven is real, and you know it's going to get him, and it's going to get them. But no, we're talking about the spirit of heaven that's in you. The one that you are building up for someone will be the one you hang from. And the issue is in ministry, we got to stop putting off bad stuff on bad people and other people and just pray that it doesn't happen to us. All right, let me move on. I'm almost finished. All right, and this, and this is the last one. And I feel like I'm doing pretty decent. I'm not going to do all right. All right, so, so the last one, the last one is the pothole that was created here. All right. Uh, again, let me just reemphasize this. Uh, the condition of the daughter was not the pothole. That was the easy thing for Jesus to fix. You know, Jesus specialized in healing. The issues... And if you study the life of him, the issues that Jesus had was racism and being people.
people being prejudiced because they felt like, just check out them disciples. They, they felt like, well, if they're not a Jew, they don't need to get none of this. And that spirit still exists right now. Well, you know, they don't look like us. No. What they say, here Jesus was, Brother Parker, and I'm going to say this, I'm going to move on. Jesus is at the well, and a woman comes up who got a jacked up history. And, and the disciples knew who she was, and they knew her history, and they thought Jesus didn't know. And so, so, so you know, so Jesus is left there with her at the well, and everybody knows about the story, about the husbands that she had, and all the men that she had, and all the relationships that she had. And she finally, hear me in the spirit, met the right one. Y'all missed this. What you mean, preacher? Let me let me let me let me let me nip it very quickly, Sister Gail. It's hard to meet the right one when you're not at the well. Okay. So let me let me move. All right. So so she so she she finally meets the right one. And, and Jesus told her everything about herself. And all of a sudden, when the disciples come back, they like, oh no. You know who this? Let me put it in today's time. Who that? Who that be? But the issue is, the issue is, is that Jesus was, was, was changing her future. And, and they didn't think that she should be changed because she didn't look like them. Don't you ever in life ever make a declaration that people don't deserve something from God? All of us are God's children. As if you land on that hospital table and you need a heart, you ain't gonna color, you ain't gonna care what color person had that heart. Okay, that's too deep, so let me move on. So here, here's here's the last one. And this is a revelation, and I don't want you to ever forget this. The, 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 this, is the, this is the first one, and you probably have never thought about it, but it's gonna bless your heart. All right. In Genesis chapter 3, all right, you know, we, we always talk about Adam and Eve. All right. But I want, I want to share something with you that, that's going to bless you. And, and I want you to always remember this text. All right? Now, Adam and Eve are in place. Say that with me. They are in place. All right? That means that they are where God positions them to be. That means everything they need is right there at their fingers. So they are in place. We're in agreement with that. All right? As a matter of fact, let me say that to you. When you're in place, everything you need, God will provide it. Okay? Let me say it again. Let me say it slower for my YouTubers. When you are in place, everything you need, God will provide it. You ain't got a brown nose. You ain't got a lie. You ain't got a steal. When you are in place, God will take care of you. Anybody experiencing that right now? Who can say it with me? God is taking care of me. Come on, say it. Say it like the YouTube people need to hear you. Say it. God is taking care of me. I may not have all the money, but God is taking care of me. I may not have the biggest house. But God is taking care of me. And you know what that means? That means I'm grateful for what I have. So they're in place, Brother Mike. They're in place. And all of a sudden, now I want you to remember this, that just because you're in place does not exclude you from the, from the enemy trying to have access to you. Let me, let me say it again. Just because you're in place does not mean that the enemy won't attempt to, to gain access to you. As a matter of fact, you ought to know you're in place when the enemy is trying to get you. Ooh, that's a good one. So if the enemy ain't bothering you, well, I don't know. But, but, but if, 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 if you are in place, the enemy always comes for those who are in place 
And here they are in place in the garden, Ron. And old Slewfoot comes up. And here's what he says, Mother Parker. Have God said. <laughs> Did God say you should not eat of every tree of the garden? Did God say that? That's what he's asking. He's asking Eve this. Did the man, the God you serve, the God that gave you all this, did he say that? And she says unto the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the, true, of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, watch this, here's a revelation. Hear me. You shall not eat it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. Here comes the problem. God never said anything about touching. God only said, don't eat it. Because God, he, he know you ain't going to just bend your back and he know you ain't going to do that. He know that if you're going to eat it, you have to use your hands. But God never said anything about hands and he never said anything about touching. He simply said, don't eat it. Well, here comes the pothole. The pothole comes, Brother Mike, when we don't know what the word says. The pothole comes, Pastor Luana, Elder Luana, the, the pothole comes when we take and add to what God said. God never said anything about touching. He only said, don't eat it. And this creates and has created a pothole for many of us, and we don't even know it. Because you're using the word, but you're adding your word to the word. And when you're using the word of God, you need to use the word of God, and that's it. Just like, just like you know, you know, when you say Jesus, when you say the name of Jesus, Something has to happen. But when we call your name, Latika, Queenie, Judith, Patricia, them demons going to look at you like, mm hmm, keep on. Maggie, Sanders, the third, Sherry, them demons is going to look at you. But when you try Jesus, Something has to happen. I want you to look at your neighbor and say, just try Jesus. Something has to happen in your life. Every pothole you come up against, when you call the name Jesus, he will give you the wisdom and give you the knowledge and give you the know-how to deal with that pothole. But the devil is a liar. In the name of Jesus, every knee has got to bow and every tongue. Must confess because that's the word. Mother Parker, he never said anything about touching. All he said was, don't eat it. Now get this, because I ain't done. <laughs> Here comes another pothole. Because Eve, number one, somebody said, well, you know, you know, Pastor, if you really look at it, if you really get down to the nitty-gritty of it, she shouldn't have been talking to the serpent. Well, no, can't say that. Can't say that. What should have happened was when she had the conversation. And even after she ate it, she should have never attempted to influence Adam. Okay. Wait a minute, Pastor. I'm lost. Okay. Let me help you. All right. It's a pothole. But watch this. It's still no sin. Well, 
Wait a minute, preacher. No, wait a minute. You're going overboard. No, because God said to Adam, don't eat the fruit. So even when Eve bit it, we still was good until Adam bit it. Now we got a pothole. Well, what's the pothole? Now, let me tell you what this pothole has done for you. It changes your senses. Wait a minute. Slow down, Pastor. What you mean? It changes. When you have disobeyed God, your senses, I'm talking about your five senses, they change. Number one, let me break it down to you. How? How, Pastor? How? Yeah, tell us. How? Number one, they were in the garden, Deacon, right? And every day they worship. Every day they heard God walking through the garden. Every day. But now, after they bit the fruit, he sounds different. Oh, God. And what sense is that? You're hearing. So he sounds different. And because he sounds different, you know what happens? Now they are afraid. It's the same God walking through the same garden. But now, because you have, have been disobedient, you hear things different. That's why, ooh, I'm going to say this, preachers, we can't get mad when folks don't change when we preach the word of God.